Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Brett and I, Millimeter USA here. And today we're gonna have a special on standard manufacturing 1911s. Here in front of you is the royal blue finish on this particular 1911. It is a steel frame and slide CNC machine from Forgings. So the very top quality here, no mem or cast parts or anything like that. Beautiful, look at that gas pedal for a safety right there in a treated blue, special blue on all the pieces, including all the pins and screws and everything that keeps it together. Just an absolutely gorgeous 1911. It has blue lock grips on it too to go with the pistol. It is one of my favorite 1911s. It does come with a five inch stainless steel match grade barrel here on the end. So again, everything is match grade. The trigger is medium size. It is very well fit in there. Just a touch. And then side to side, if you push it hard enough, you can get a little movement out of it. Very well fit trigger. Compared to some of the others I have seen in the past, this is one of the best. A gorgeous 1911. It has an enhanced slide to frame fit right there. You can see how well fit it is. This is one of those pistols that almost gives you the quality of the best custom 1911s for $1,200 to $1,300. And that's no joke. This thing, I think, hits way above its uh, belt line here. This thing just shoots for the friggin' home run fence every time you look at it or examine it. It is very well put together and a top pick as far as I'm concerned. What else do we get with this? we get an extended mag release yep it's definitely an extended mag release right there and here's the sound of it wow that thing is really well put in there wonderful very nicely done in the back, better than some uh, customs I have seen. Somebody was asking about the standard manufacturing. Are they a Series 70? And the answer to that is, it is definitely a Series 70. It has no marks of being a Series 80. Let's check the trigger on this one before we move on. So I catch this with my pinky right here to engage. Three pounds, eight and a half ounces, or dead perfect in my opinion. Let's take a look at the other one. This one here, it is a five inch. This one also is in 45 ACP and the finish is a sandblast blued. It does say standard manufacturing LLC marked right on it. And again, all of these are made in the USA. HPX is on the other side. It's got serrations in the front and in the rear, just like the past one did. And it is also even easier to see now a series 70. So there's no extra drop safety of a Series 80 with the extra safety back there. Very well put together, guys. Look at that. Just very well put together. And again, right here, perfect. So you've got, again, a standard manufacturing production 1911 that is hand fit almost to the quality of a custom 1911 as far as, you know, its first look over the pistol. Let's check this out right here. Seems like you got a little bigger gap on this particular trigger than you did on the other. And there is a little bit more movement as you can see right there. And side to side, there's also a little movement side to side. Not bad, but definitely not to this one right here. So, so far the best quality is this one right here. But this is more of a tactical like, I think, user type 1911. You know, this is made for more of a field use. Again, it has a very large gas pedal like safety. Let's go ahead and listen to that. Again, excellent. Try the trigger. So you got that much movement. It firms up. Tiny bit of creep. And then it breaks. Reset. On the HPX. Immediate. It pushes hard. I'm back on it. Ooh. It fell at about three pounds, two ounces. Again, immediate. Guys, this is a light trigger. Let's see how light. It's put together very well back here in the back. The ejector looks good. The sights are white contrast. Beautiful. For a basic 1911, right? Very light trigger. I guessed it at like 3.1 or 3.2. Let's see. 
in the middle of the trigger. We're going to come straight back. Three pounds, 5.6 ounces. It feels Well, I think that's right. Definitely less than four. Light as I thought it was. So again, this is a worker's 1911 with a huge gas pedal for safety. Everything's put together very nicely. So again, this is a very nice standard manufacturing pistol. The HPX is more along the lines of like a carry pistol, a workhorse that you're gonna use, right? Again, all forged parts, no skimping on quality here. The trigger may not be quite as good, but it is light for what you're looking for. It's very light. Gas pedal-like safety, excellent. Very good. And just feels like quality. I mean, guys, it feels like quality. This is what my Dan Wessons kind of remind me of you know this is what they were but there's no rust problems on these and i had a bad experience with the dan wesson customer service too and that's why you're going to see young beretta putting not fully recommended on some of the videos just because it's not one that we fully trust anymore dan wesson is not our number one 1911. anyway there's the hpx and one more coming this last one right here let me grab the box since i knocked it off on the ground the last one right here is the straight up 1911 g model it's the one that some of you thought, you know, kind of expensive for a uh, World War II like 1911. And that may be true. Let me make some room for myself here. Government model 264, 1911 A1, U.S. Army right there. So you're going to have a very small front sight on it and a very GI looking rear sight here. It's put together very nicely with just a small gap right here. The ejector's good. The front strap is not done like your HPX. Again, you get more value, I think, and a better feeling 1911 with your HPX. <clears throat> but for those of you that are just, you know, addicted to the past and you want something that uh, resembles a 1911 from back in the World War II days, Maybe even World War I days. This is going to be more like World War II, in my opinion. You've got that here. Check out the little holes on the trigger right there. It's a little strange. Trigger feels like about four and a half or five pounds. Yeah. It's got the spur hammer on it with a, a little bit of texturing here at the top. Young Beretta said that he thought he liked the uh, HPX better than I think all of them, but I don't think there's a way that you can fault this one right here. If you want a beautiful showpiece, this is it right here. I absolutely love this one too, but he's right. I think uh, this one is not even close to the other two. Now, will it run and, and do all those things for you? Sure, sure. I'm sure it will. But for us personally, it comes in third. Let's check out the uh, trigger pull. Three pounds, 11 ounces. Four pounds, 11 ounces. So even this one, guys, has a decent trigger on it. It really does. And a decent reset. Let's look for trash here. See if the trigger is decent quality. I actually think this tree, yeah, it is. This trigger is a little bit better than this one right here as of right now. Um, but we'll see. As far as movement is concerned, let's check that out. A little bit of movement up and down, a little bit of movement side to side. So by far the best trigger fitment and everything else is this by a mile. This is fantastic. So if you're gonna ask us how we're gonna rank them, standard manufacturing, 1911s let's rank them third place second place and first place how much money do you have to spend because i think also they go up in price from third to second and then second to first but 
if you're in the budget of anything more than a basic 91011, these two right here have to be considered, especially for the price. I think they bring a lot to the table. These are all about the same amount of money. So you're looking at 12 to 1300 here, 12 to 1300 here, and starting at 12 to 1300 here. So depending on what you get on it, you're gonna have to see what your price would be from your local dealer. But there's my take on it, all three of them. These two I think are definite keepers. This is gonna be a workhorse, this is a carry gun. I mean, that's what this thing is. Myself, I've carried guns that are like this too. So my Spardella, right, looks very, very similar to this. So I'll carry whatever I want, whenever I want. I don't care how nice it is. If I beat it up, I beat it up. You only live once and you bought it, right? It's yours, you own it, do what you want. But this one probably will fall off the table and be one of the ones that I won't keep long-term where these two should be keepers for my lifetime. All right, guys, that's it for this one. The three standard manufacturing 1911s and what my final thoughts are on them. They all are great 1911s. I favor these two right here. Your mileage may differ. Thanks for watching the channel, guys. Remember to subscribe to the Beretta 9mm USA channel and the CZ 9mm USA channel. I'm still running a tool channel, so if you've got some extra time to kill, come on over to the Legion of Tools and hit that subscribe button. Remember, all of them require you to click on that notification bell so you get notified when we put up more videos. And obviously, Young Beretta's got me making a lot more gun videos right now than I am tool videos. So if you guys hit the subscribe button and the bell icon on the Beretta channel and the CZ 9mm, Limited USA channel, you should get more gun videos coming your way. Until the next one, guys, please be safe out there. Much respect to each and every one of you. Be nice to each other, and we'll see you on the next video. Remember, your Second Amendment is worth protecting.